Hey everyone, welcome back to my Zelda tutorials. In this episode we are going to create basic screen scrolling. So when the player reaches the end of the screen, it will move to the next screen on a grid. We're also going to make sure that enemies won't be able to move around before the player can get to them by enabling and disabling their processing depending on if they're on the screen. I have an image called HUD.png that you can find in the description. Stick it into a folder called UI. We're going to get to that by the end of the video. Um, the audio on this video should be different because I just got a new microphone. I'm still not used to it yet, so expect some adjustments to make the audio as clear as possible over the next episode or two. I moved the written tutorial stretch goals on Patreon to $50, and we're at about 15 bucks today. So, more info on that at the end of the video. Anyway, let's get started. First thing we have to do is create a new scene. The root node is going to be a camera 2D and we're going to call it camera. Save that into our engine folder as camera. So we're going to set the anchor mode to fix top left. Um, so the camera's origin is here, but it is displaying this box. Um, we're going to make a area 2D, rename it area and then collision shape 2D. The shape is going to be rectangle and the X sense are going to be 60 or 80 and 64. So these values are going to depend on your game's resolution. If you're following the tutorial exactly, then our the width of our screen is 160 pixels and 144 um, 160 pixels wide, 144 um, tall. So these values, it's half of the 160 and then half of the 144 minus 16. The 16 pixels are going to be how high our HUD is going to be. So if you're not following this exactly, then adjust it depending on your screen resolution and whether or not you do want the HUD to show. But anyway, yeah. So lock that we're gonna move our area to the center it's gonna be 80 and 80 so these 16 pixels up here are the is the HUD and yeah so now we're going to create a new script save it there we're going to start with a process function So first we're going to make a variable called pos for position. So we're going to find the player node by going up up one um, level on the scene tree and looks for a node called player. So the camera node is only going to work if it's on the same level of the scene tree as the player. So. Then we're going to take the player's global position and subtract um, subtract 16 from it, from the its y value. So that's just going to lower lower where the camera is going, the grid is going to be for to account for the HUD. So then we're going to take variable x, which is equal to floor position x divided by 160 times 160. So what this does is it takes the player's global position, minus 16. By the way, global position, that's the same. I've been using global transform dot origin, but that's this is functionally the same as that except this only works for 2d projects but it's shorter so i'm just going to be using that now just a quick clarification but it takes the player's position um divides it by 160 and then rounds that down um so what this does is it finds the player's position on a grid and so if if the player let's see this will be a grid position of zero, zero. This will be a grid position of 
um, one zero, this is my negative one zero, this is zero, um, negative one. Yeah, basically this is zero zero. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to find the grid position. It's going to multiply that by 160. So it's going to move this origin point of the camera. By default, it's at 0, 0. So the camera's origin is at 0, 0. But if the player is here, then it moves it to 160, 0. Get me? So it's going to be the same thing for the Y value, except 128. Again, these are depending on your screen resolution. Um, and then we're going to set the globe position of the camera to these X and Y values. So now the camera should work. If we go back to our test room, I'm just going to delete all these enemies. Let's extend the map a little bit. So now we have to account for the HUD when making our map. So what we can do is we could set the grid to show exactly where our rooms can be laid out. So it's going to be 160 and 128, again, our screen resolution. And then we're going to offset it by 16 on the Y value and view grid. So it's hard to see with the tile map on, but here's exactly the the size of our rooms and yeah so you could kind of see it here just follow that i'm just going to make a little cross pattern Also, again, got a new mic. Sorry if you could hear traffic in the background. I'll try to edit it out. Um, yeah, so that should be good. So here are our four extra rooms. Now let's take our camera scene. Has to be in the same scene tree level as the player. And then we're going to set it to current. Um, also, just going to hide it. And now, if we run our game, we should be able, yep, yeah, move into each of the four rooms. So these are, it's just basic screen scrolling right now. Eventually, there'll be an actual sliding transition over. And if you move up, you could see kind of jumps, jumps in. Don't worry, the HUD will be there by the end of the video and it won't look as bad. And I just, just want to fix this real quick. All right. Um, so now we have to fix the enemies. So right now, if we just stick a Stealtho scene here, so I place it into the center of the room. If I don't, okay, see, he can move into this room. We're not actually going to fix that this episode, but we are going to make it so it can't move unless the player is in the same grid as it. Um, so first we're going to go to our entity script um, that is in engine and we're just going to add this line of code. If type is enemy set physics process to false. So basically, you know, um, physics process, that's where all of the actual working of the enemy is. So basically when the entity is created, just disables it. So now in our camera script, we're going to tell when we're going to enable and disable it. So 
ready function, we're going to connect two signals from the area 2D to functions of the same name. So body entered and body exited. Um, so let's start with body entered. Function body entered with an argument of body. And we're going to check if the body's type is enemy. And if it is, set its physics process to true. Okay, and then same thing for body exited. If body get type equals enemy, set physics process to false. So now, anytime an entity comes into this area, it'll get enabled and we'll be able to move around and stuff, and once it leaves, it'll be disabled. So save, let's run it so it's in the middle, it's in the middle of the scene. If we walk in, it should still be in the middle and start moving from there. Yep, and then if we leave, so, okay, bug. We're gonna get to that in either the next video or the video after that. Um, but yeah, you could see it there. It got disabled as soon as it left the, the boundary. It was in the middle, so it was technically not in any good position, um, in the grid position. So, you know, that's, that's kind of a thing we have to get to pretty quickly. I'm not going to cover in this video. It's going to be in the next video or the video after that. Um, but keep that in mind. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to make a, a, um, when we're work we're going to work on a tile map that could spawn enemies. So we don't have to have it in the scene tree. Um, we're also going to add to that tile map, a block that enemies cannot walk through that we're just going to have to put into our doorways. Um, it, it'll be simple. Um, now we're just going to finish this video by adding the HUD. So new scene, the root node is going to be a canvas layer. So this is drawn on top of the screen at all times. Uh, it doesn't take into account cameras or anything. So call it HUD, save it into that UI folder, and then add a sprite. And texture is going to be that HUD.png and the transform is going to be 80 and eight. So save that, just gonna lock that in the position. Now go to our test scene, take the HUD, stick it in there, and should should be good. Yep. All right, so that's all I'm gonna cover in this video. Eventually, yeah, we're gonna have that Zelda sliding animation and we have to fix the stuff us being able to walk um, off the screen. It only happens when the player is um, on its screen. So technically you could just kill the enemy before it leaves, but we have to fix that. Um, so, quick note on the Patreon. Previously written tutorials was at 75 bucks, but I moved it to 50 as an old goal was removed. I'm going to make a written version of the first episode to show how they're gonna look and how much extra information will be shown. Please think of pledging on my Patreon if you're enjoying these videos and check out the Discord channel. It's getting pretty active and it's the best place to reach me or get help from anyone on my videos. Along with the written tutorial demo, I'm also going to do a live development stream on YouTube as we're getting close to that $25 stretch goal. Um, I'll try to set a date for that soon, so keep an eye out on Discord or my Twitter. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying the tutorial so far, and thanks for watching.